Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father, with my co-host, Gina. Today we have an awesome interview for you. We have the band Doll Skin. That's right, Doll Skin. They're on the show with us right now. They have a debut album that's out right now called In Your Face Again. And this is pretty cool. It's been produced by David Ellison of Megadeth. And if you don't know who that is, then you're definitely not into the metal world of music. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> this is also released on EMP Label Group. And we're going to be talking to the whole band, actually, this time. And since Gina is already in a doghouse with them, we'll let Gina <laughs> ask the first question and uh, get this started off. So thanks for being on the show, guys. Of course. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Why don't we just go ahead and start off, and I'll let you guys kind of just open up. And why don't you tell us a little bit about Dollskin and how you guys formed, just a little bit history and a little bit of the music. Dollskin was a little project of mine when I was in the school of rock when I was a junior in high school and I was going to I wanted to like you know perform in the high school's battle of bands and I got the girls together for that little battle of bands we were like this is just going to be a one-time thing it's like I don't think really anything is going to happen after it but when we won the whole thing we we're like yes something will happen here we go <laughs> <laughs> Okay, after we won first place, we got to play, like, the school's, like, festival thing, which they have every year, and kind of after we did that, we had a bunch of songs, because that's a four, it was a 45-minute set, so we had to learn enough songs to play a 45-minute oh, wow. set, and so we had a lot of songs under our belt, and we were like, you know, we can, like, go and play our own shows, like, we don't have to just play this show, we can go kind of do more, so for the next, like, year between that and the next competition, we just kind of played around Phoenix. So how long ago was that? Three and a half years ago. Yeah, I think three and a half years ago. So three and a half years from your school performance, you guys are doing Warp Tour. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty yeah. awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. What was it like performing for the first time at the talent competition compared to performing now? I remember, like, the first time playing, I, we, I just kind of, like, felt something while we were playing. I was like, this feels right, and this feels... <laughs> Ruby <laughs> and like Sydney was like getting people involved I'm like oh my god like this is this is like you know something that I want to keep doing oh yeah and for me like I I I've I had been performing for a little bit but it was never with my own band you know it was never I was never playing originals on stage and so when we played a song that we wrote it just kind of like clicked for me that this is this is what I wanted to do like I was on that stage and I was running around I was like screaming my head off the whole time and I was like this is where I belong. Like I was looking out at the crowd and I was like, I want to do this forever, you know? <laughs> and plus Alex can play the guitar. She can shred on a guitar. So there you go. Oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't say that lightly. I mean, I'm serious. You're, you're a great, great band and, and just great guitarist as well. God, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that. How would you guys say that you've evolved in the past three or three and a half years? We have evolved, wow, geez, like leaps and bounds. I think all of us in our skill levels and like, uh, you know, our technicality and the complexity of our songs, like everything just is fuller and like we have a more of a bigger grasp of who we are. And, you know, we didn't, you know, in the beginning we were struggling to find out like, you know, what genre we are, but then we kind of accepted that we're like every, you know, rock genre. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we definitely had the luxury of, improving and growing together as like a unit like playing off each other's weaknesses and strengths so that's been pretty beneficial yeah and we've been on the road with a bunch of other bands that are kind of all over the place like we've been on the band on the road with otep which is pretty heavy fire from the gods which is pretty heavy and so that took what we had been learning and kind of gave us a new perspective on music to write you know and so we got really inspired by the music we were on the tour with or we were on tours with and stuff and we we it's all over the place still like in your face kind of there's a little bit of every genre and with manic pixie dream girl there's a lot more uh defined parts of the owl you know mm -hmm. like every song kind of has you can tell that it was influenced by someone else yeah fire from the gods is a great band really really great band yes they are <laughs> <laughs> cg do they like me <laughs> Uh, Everyone's mad at me because I'm a minute late. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> so, mad at you. <laughs> so let's talk about the debut album in your face again. Uh, what's impressed you guys the most about it up to this point right now? We're really just impressed that people are listening to it in general. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because this is this is our baby, you know, and we 
we're never entirely sure how our baby was going to be received by the public. Like if people are going to think it was a good baby or a bad baby. <laughs> Could be a baby, ugly baby, ugly baby a disgusting baby. Yeah, but like the fact that people are like, this is a cool baby. We're like, awesome. <laughs> we didn't know what to expect, you know? Yeah, we didn't know that some of the songs on the album would be as personally like well received like so much nothing like sydney does this whole like spiel before she plays a song at the show is about how you know her personal experience and why she wrote it and like people are like it's my favorite song like it just gets me in a place and i'm just like oh my god i didn't know what, that we could write a song like that for someone you know yeah yeah and this is a cool part about this david elson uh he produced this album uh how was work with him and did he push you guys really hard on this or just let you go let's go in your own flow with it he, he did a little bit of both i think he was you know he heard the songs that we wanted to play for in your face and he was like very nice good job <laughs> and then like there's other songs that he was like okay well maybe we can just kind of like you know edit them a little bit and you know, he, he helped us come up with new ideas, but everything that we wrote was stuff that we wrote ourselves. What about new stuff right now? Are you guys, I know this has been out since last year, but you guys got any in the tank right now, possibly coming up? Yep, we have a new album coming out on June 16th, the first day of Warp Tour. Nice. Oh, wow. Soon. Good deal. Yeah, so it's called Manic Pixie Dream Girl, and we, I, I, for one, pick this album over anything we've ever written, <laughs> but... Um, I think Manic Pixie Dream Girl as my number one, but I just think that I'm really excited for everyone to hear it. Yeah, yeah, no, I personally, we've all put a lot into this album, you know, into this new album, it, whether it be in the recording process or just in the writing process. We've done a lot of, you know, trial and error. Like, there's a good handful of songs that we have but didn't put on the album yeah. because they weren't good enough, you know, and you'll never hear them probably. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, we've, and the thing about a lot of these songs is that we've kind of been playing a couple of them, uh, like on tour and stuff before we even recorded them to kind of see if we can make them better and to see if, like, see how the crowds would react and stuff, or just to play them because we liked them, you know? The new album that's coming out, um, are there any songs off this album that you guys like that stick out more possibly? I feel like we each have our own favorite. Yeah, that's what I love about this album. Yeah, what I, what I, what we all love about this album is that it's so diverse. You know, like we have songs that are not only diverse in the sound, but diverse in the topics that they cover. Yeah. Like there's, you know, there's obviously, there's, there has to be relationship songs. So there's relationship songs. So there's also songs about, there's a song about serial killers. There's a song about, you know, um, like um, abusive parents and like stuff like that, you know, like <laughs> we have... And then, like, there's songs about horror movies, which is fine. Nice. That. No, that's um, great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, um, my personal favorite, ah, I mean, it's a tie for me between, there's a song on the album called Daughter, and then there's another one called Punch a Nazi. So, those are my favorites. Serial killers and horror oh. movies, it's way to my and, heart. There you go. Yep. How would you say, and this is open to anybody, how does music affect you on a personal level? Would you say like you're more, or what would grab your attention? Are you more of like a lyrics person or a, maybe you hear the music first or how, how does that work for you? Music, jeez. I feel like me personally, there's... I like it. <laughs> I, 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 like I, it. I, I like it. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, so... I like music. <laughs> As a really recent example, there was a new album that came out, and one of the first songs I heard, I, I heard, you know, the music first. And then later mm -hmm. on, I went back and I paid attention to the, to the lyrics, you know, and it, if it kind of hits my soul, like, the, the song, the music has to, like, hit me, you know, mm -hmm. like, if it's not impactful with the instruments and with the stuff that's going on behind the lyrics, and if it's not catchy, you know, like, I feel like, after the first time I listen to it, there needs to be a part of the song that I can remember. Mm -hmm. yep. I just, there's, there's just a certain formula to it, to making music that's good. And some people do it and some people don't. It doesn't, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. We all, we all have our like different ways of like writing music and everything. And all music is, you know, it's good music unless, you know, otherwise, you know, it's, you know, it's all opinion. But I think that, Geez, music has is like the universal language for everyone, and sure. the you know lyrics are a very big thing for me because I well I'm the one that writes the lyrics in this band, and I feel like if we are cliche, we ain't nothing, you know. <laughs> like <laughs> you have to do something that's not done before, or because everyone said said it before. I mean, 
I wanted to quote Marilyn Manson there, but I'm not going to. Um, <laughs> so, but, <laughs> but, you know, oh, go ahead. Has, you know, okay. You know, there's a line in one of his songs that says every, everything has been said before, nothing left to say anymore. Like, I think that we need to, you know, like work the creativity with music. And like, I know that all of us personally just feel this huge relationship with music and, or else we wouldn't be what we'd be doing right now. We're, we're doing this because we have a love for music and performing and not for the business side of it, but the business side, you got to do it. So you got to do it because (laughs) if you want to perform your music for people, if you want to take your music to a new level, you have to, you know, kind of suck it up and deal with all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. But really we're all in this for the joy of playing and for the joy of spreading what we have to say. Mm-hmm. Yep. With, with the new album that's coming out, um, who produced this one? Did David do this one as well for you guys? It was Evan Rodnick of Cage Nine. He was producer. He did like all the recording and all the mixing. He mixed it too. God, he's the best person ever. <laughs> um, he really, he really, like we say uh, in our thank yous, he really helped us find the sound of the Manic Pixie Dream Girl. You mm-hmm. know, he helped yeah. us find what it was going to sound like and how it was all going to play out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Evan's amazing. a cool guy. An amazing job. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, he's been on the show before. I'm just a really down to earth good guy, and he knows his stuff too. He oh, does. Yeah. He's, he's really like talented and he's intelligent. He's, he is woke as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys listening to right now? Ah, I have to go look into my Spotify. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I have my band. Ready. Okay, okay. Oh, there you go, Sydney. Go. So I. Personally, there's been a few bands that I've just been nonstop listening to. The only reason I can list them out right now is because we just recently did a, <laughs> a an interview where I had to list my top five favorite bands. Uh, and so I've been listening to Pierce the Veil. Nice. Um, sure. Kind of all nice. of their music, really. Issues, Icy Star. Yes. Let Live, who's no longer a band anymore, and that makes me cry every time I think about it. Yep. <laughs> um, and then the New Motionless and Wide album, I've been playing that a lot. Yes! I'm, I'm been, John, am I not obsessed with the New Motionless? Like, I've been on it every day. I have not heard nothing <laughs> nonstop. That's all it's been about. Much nothing wide. Much I'm, nothing wide. I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, Issues also, but and, the and New Motionless that is out, I can't stop listening to. And so. don't mention Corey me Tyler. Too, me too. Oh my God. Yeah, and, 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 and don't mention Corey Tyler around her either, because she'll go off. John, you are so full of it. That's so funny. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna. I won't go off. Okay, Corey. You know, like everyone has th- that person, right? Okay, and like he's my person. Like if we ever interviewed him, I'd have like I'd have to get my shit together. Because <laughs> yeah. Slipknot gonna, is my favorite band. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop a plug right here right now. So <laughs> my go for it. Is currently opening. They're currently opening for Stone Sour right now in Sioux City. They're direct support, so it's pretty cool. It's really yes. cool. Evil Engine. Evil, Evil Engine, Engine is a good one. Yes, Evil Engine is a great band. They're really punk and awesome. Paramore's new album is amazing. I've been listening to a lot of No Effects. The new Gorillaz album. The new Gorillaz album. Really? Um, and Fire from the Gods. Oh, always fire from, from the gods. Let's talk a little bit about Warp Tour coming up. That's exciting. Is this yeah. your guys' first time on Warp Tour? Yes, it's our very first time. How are you preparing for it? Uh, <laughs> screaming and running around. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, just lots of practice and lots of running over new songs and, and old songs. And, and lots of uh, lots of getting prepared for the, you know, the struggles of what we are not expecting, but anticipating. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, like, we hot. <laughs> we're like trying to talk to other bands that have been on it before. And we're just kind of like, what else could we do to make sure we don't die of heat stroke? <laughs> and <laughs> that we, you know, can market the best we can while we're there, you know. And I'll tell you this, too. This year's Warp Tour, I'm really impressed with. Um, it puts in mind of the old school Warp Tours. We used to have a lot of ska bands, a lot of punk bands. But now this year, mm-hmm. it's a mixture of fucking A heaviness. That's all I got to say. Yeah, very heavy. <laughs> yeah, Hatebreed is on it. Uh, you know, they've got I know, my, Hatebreed. And like you guys. Municipal Waste, like, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a heavy, heavy Warp Tour. And then they've got Doll Skin. <laughs> That's cool. That's and really cool. <laughs> okay, so if people come and see you on Warp Tour, what can they expect from uh, your performance? A, a lot. Energy. Of, yeah, energy. Old songs and new songs. Lots of new songs. And old songs. 
Van and cool covers too, or cover one. Okay, we're spoiling too much, but just a lot of like fun new stuff and a good time. And for Sydney to yell at them. <laughs> True. Yeah, lots of colorful hair. There you go. <laughs> so when this album comes out June 2nd, the new one, what do you hope the guys and gals take away from it once they start to listen to it? Man, that's a lot. I mean, I feel like this album can bring a lot of people together and not to sound... I, I, I think we have a lot to say in the variety of our topics we cover. Mm -hmm. And I feel like no matter who you are, you can find something to relate to. And, you know, we, we cover things in this album that, you know, could be considered controversial for this time in politics right now and so i hope that our there's this one song that we have called punch and nazi <laughs> and i'm really hoping that that you know kind of starts some sort of talk talk yeah, yeah. I, I just feel like i feel like this album is something that can be talked about mm -hmm. you know yeah. so yeah <laughs> i love talking about it yeah well that's good you should be here's the thing I know you guys are a young band, but if you guys can't get behind your own music, then how are we as fans are supposed to do it? That's the thing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. You, We're very proud. Yeah. So, and another thing too, uh, let's get this in here. I know it's the digital era that we're in right now with recording and everything like that, but do you like it the way it is these days with the recording process? I know you guys are not in a studio, but as far as like getting your music out there digitally and, and things like that, social media and stuff, do you like this or... Would you like to go back to the old days of recording and self-promotion, stuff like that? I know there's still self-promotion now, but do you like it the way it is now? For us, it's, it's social media, the digital age, it's a second nature. So it's like we feel, I mean, obviously it can be exploited and it can be like, you know, just pushed way too far. We're trying to do like a happy, you know. Happy. Like a happy medium. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I feel like social media has brought so much of a new way to put your music out there you know like usually it used to be that you have to just do the groundwork and go like and it, it was more difficult to reach a large amount of people for sure you know yeah. unless everyone's talking about you unless everyone's you know telling their friends about you there's no way to reach all the people that you want to reach and now it's like there can be a little girl who lives in some country like i don't know we've never even thought about Brilliant. listening to our music before that probably it never would have reached before if it was just word of mouth mm -hmm. and it's like it's such a bigger platform to reach people that would have never otherwise heard of our music so it's just it's it's cool to know that social media as a platform does so much for artists i feel like in your guys own opinion for each of you if you guys want to answer all this what does doll skin bring to the table for music that's not out there as of right now mm, okay energy aggression but not too much aggression <laughs> um <laughs> just a little just a little a new voice yeah and you know topics that should be talked about and a great live show i'm gonna brag we have a pretty great live show <laughs> yeah i mean we have we have a passion and i feel like we have a friendship between the four of us oh yeah not to get sappy but we have like a really <laughs> close relationship between the four of us and it shows on stage like, we throw things at each other, we kick each other, but we do it out of love, and we do it for the fun of doing that on stage and yeah. making people laugh, you know? Like, we're not just playing the music, we are having fun with it. And if we think about, if, if we're thinking, what can I do on stage, and we think, hmm, what if I go and grab Nicole's ankles? <laughs> do it. <laughs> I don't know, but do it. <laughs> yep. Megan gets pissed on the drums, and she just throws a drumstick. Hits up. Yep, so, exactly. speaking of, like... Yep. <laughs> The band dynamic. Do you guys have any pet peeves with each other or pet peeves about touring? Oh, God. <laughs> We're going to start yelling and screaming at each other right now. <laughs> um, I just think Nicole's really dumb and should just <laughs> leave the band. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Man. I mean, I feel like we all have little things that bother, bother us about each other, but they're not things that get in the way of how we sure. interact. You know? yeah. There I mean, was one time that Ooh, Nicole threw pancakes? Was it I you? I threw Alex's pancakes on the floor. You made up for that. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I threw Alex's pancakes on the floor because I was mad at her. And, but it was fine. <laughs> I used the pancakes. That's great. <laughs> That's great, yeah. That's great. <laughs> Here's your pancakes. Bam. Yeah, exactly. watch out for throwing pancakes. That's awesome. That's awesome. So what made you guys each want to become a musician? What was that spark for each of you? Wow. I don't, I don't know, Megan. <laughs> I think 
we just all had these really interesting personalities. Like, uh, I would say, like, I am kind of like a more of a mom thing, but also I'm like kind of a kid at the same time because, you know, Sydney has to remind me to like drink water, don't not take care of yourself. <laughs> and Sydney is just like the fix it, everything. She's responsible. She runs merch. She's like, she got it. <laughs> Nicole is like, I'm going to yell at you and I'm going to make you sure you guys are doing the right thing or else I'll fuck whoop your ass. And, yeah, I'll fuck you whoop your ass. <laughs> I'll fuck you whoop, your ass. <laughs> whoop your ass. And then Alex is like, I'm just here. I'm just. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Alex is the one that just like slides off when everything's going up. She's like, I'm just going to sneak out of right. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gone. but I feel like, I feel like we each, we each had different, we've, we've all had really different upbringings, you know, we've all grown up in different, in different ways. Like Megan grew up kind of always playing the drums, always being involved in like the local music scene. Yeah. Alex grew up listening to a lot of music, going to a lot of shows, and then one day deciding that she wanted to play guitar, you know, I personally i i was always kind of interested in performing but it took me a while to realize i wanted to be a musician yeah i think it was just the way that we all found music was because we just like related to music sometime like early on and it just like shaped the people that we are today and the reason we're so invested in music is because of our personalities and the way that it definitely shaped our personalities today yeah we've always we've always i feel like all four of us have had a passion for or performing, you know, or for, for doing what we want, which is a lot of what music is about, you know. And I, I just feel like I feel like we all found what we needed in music. Yeah. I'm gonna say this right now, and I'm not saying this just because you, you girls are on here, but it's the truth. You guys you are four girls playing in a band and a lot of these young girls they look up to you guys for that. Um, and you're an inspiration Yay. to them. So with that being said, <laughs> what's it mean to you? <laughs> and I'm sure you guys get this now. If you get emails or prior to the shows or after the shows, you'll have little kids, little young girls come and tell you guys that, hey, you've gave them inspiration to maybe one day to become a musician. Or you've had somebody come and tell you that you've given them inspiration to overcome obstacles. Uh, it's just your music has made them, you know, relax and get away from everything that we go through. What's it mean to you guys at a young age right now? It feels wonderful. It's yeah. like a full circle. It's like we grew up seeing musicians that really inspired us and then to have people tell us that we inspired them it's just completely just full circle like yeah. to know that we did to someone else what someone did to us it's really cool who have been and speaking of so who have been some of your musical influences my chemical romance is a group uh we all really love no effects and dead sarah is great too yeah Paramore, we definitely take influence from for sure i know alex and megan really like avenge sevenfold and sydney and sydney yes yeah. so yeah as a group uh, we have a lot of the same interest yep Avenged Sevenfold. That's wearing a shirt. I like Avenged Sevenfold. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. <laughs> That's right. How can folks stay in touch with you guys, buy some merchandise, and uh, keep on your tour dates? How can you do that? Oh, ask how. So we have our merch online on our website at www.dolskinman.com. Yeah, dolskinmerch.com is going to be where you're going to buy the merch. You can find all of that through our Facebook. There's going to be a lot of links for that. So you can buy music through our website, which will just be dolskinmerch.com, and then find out news on dolskinband.com. Okay. Uh, yeah. be before I let you guys go, would one of you care to do a promo for the show real quick? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Hey, we're Dolskin, and you're listening to Bob Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. we got some great, great music coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Uber Seed Radio from my co-host, Gina. We will see you next week. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you.